So we'll continue with specialization. This topic is money, still under specialization. Because whatever we have specialized on, whatever we do, whatever aspect of our production is, whatever our aspect of production is, we need to spend money, yes, or we need to pay. We produce or they are producing for us, we definitely have to pay, yes or no? So what we use in making payment is called money. So this takes us to talking about money. So what is money? I hope. Money is, a, is anything that is generally accepted as a means of payment and a medium of exchange. So it is anything that is legal. Can you stop that please? Sorry. Money is anything that is generally accepted as a means of payment and a medium of exchange. Money is anything that is generally accepted. That means we all accept it is money. So if we don't all accept it is money, then it can't be money. Because if I don't accept, you don't accept, then I won't take it from you, you won't take it from me. Do you understand? So money needs legality. And legality comes with acceptance. So it has to be generally accepted by the people that this is money. Stop that way. It has to be seen, uh, accepted by people that it is money. So it's a legal of this. Legality means it's backed by law. The law says it is. So mostly I could say money is what the Lord says it is. So that's another definition for money. Do we get it? Do we understand this? Yes. Money is what the Lord says it is. So if the Lord says this is money, if the law of this country says this is money, it becomes money. That is the point I'm making. Do we get it? Because we all have to accept it because no one is above the law. So if the law says this is money, then we have to accept it as money. Stop writing and listen, please. Do you understand what money is here? So we go to the functions of money. The first one is medium of exchange. When we talk about medium of exchange, we're talking about what money is being used for. I wrote, money is used as a means of payment for work done or for a product purchased. So when you go to that market, you buy things, that has focus, please. When you go to the market, you buy things, you have to pay. So whenever the product, stop writing, please. Whenever the product is being, whenever you go to the market, you buy something from the market, they won't just give you the product, you have to give them something back in exchange. That is money. So if I'm going to sell this to you, you have to give me money for the sales. Do we understand? So that is why we call it money. That's why money functions as a medium of exchange. It means we can use it to buy goods or services. Goods and services, not even all. We have to use it for, to buy goods and services. So whatever we have to buy, it has to be exchanged with money. That's the first function. Do you understand medium of exchange here? Money is what we use in buying goods and services. Is it clear? Please put your head up. The next time you're out. Is the first point clear? Yes. Is it clear, please? Yes. The second point, measure of value. I wrote, money is a unit of account. This simply means money is used to give value to a product. Because there is money, we are able to know the price or the worth of this product. During the days without money, where it was butter, that we have to exchange goods for goods. We don't have store or we don't have measure of value. Please, you have to be attentive here. Money is a, another function for money is a measure of value, which means a unit of account. Now let's go back to those days that there's no money, that we have to use barter, barter trade, exchanging goods for goods. At that, at those, in, during those days, we cannot really figure out the worth of any product or the worth of any service. So whatever I need is what I need to get whatever you want. So if you need something from me, whatever I think is the worth of that thing is what I will ask from you before I could give it to you. So there's no measurement of value. There's no measurement of values when it was butter. So because of the problem of butter, that brings about money. So without money, we cannot really place figures. We cannot really place values on whatever we get. Or whatever we need to buy with butter trade so it means if i need maybe i need this bottle of water during the butter trade if i need bottled water and no let's say i have marker and i need bottled water so i need to find someone who has who needs marker and who has bottled water do you get it so there's always going to be double coincidence of wants before you could get an exchange exchanging goods for goods the one of the problem about exchanging goods for goods is that when I have to exchange a marker for a bottle of water that I need, I need to find someone who also needs a bottle of water and who has a bottle of water and uh, who, who needs a marker and has a bottle of water. Do you get what I'm saying or not? No. I'm going to repeat it. 
there is a problem which about butter. Butter is about exchanging goods for goods, exchanging this for this. So if I really need a marker, this is what I need. Because there's no money to buy. So I need to find I need the marker. And the person that has the marker needs need has the what the person that has I have a bottle of water, sorry. I have the bottle of water and I need a marker. So I need to find someone who needs a marker, who has a marker and needs a bottle of water. Do you get it now? Yes. I have a I have a marker, but I need a bottle of water. Or I need, okay, let's use because I'm a teacher, I need a marker, but I have a bottle of water. So I need to find someone who needs a bottle of water and has a marker. Do you get it? So that, that's what we call double coincidence of wants. I couldn't buy a marker because I don't have money to buy a marker. There's no money to buy a marker. So because we don't have money, we need to exchange goods for goods. So this is a problem. We call it double coincidence of wants. So you need to find someone who has what you want, who needs what you have. Do we get it now, please? Yeah. Great. So this was a problem. Then the, to solve the problem, money comes into existence. So why, do, why did money come into existence? Money came into existence because we have to value whatever we sell. Because I don't know the worth of the marker, it doesn't know the worth of, I don't know the worth of the marker, it doesn't know the worth of the bot water. So we don't have values. But with money, we can make a value, we can have a worth, we can know the worth of a product or a service. Do we understand medium of, of yeah. measure of value here? Money allows us to place a figure on whatever product we have or whatever service we rendered. Is it clear now? Yes. Great. The third one, a store of value. Money can be used to decide when it is convenient to spend. Sometimes you have money, you don't want to spend now, you want to save. So you, with money, because you have the money, you can decide whatever you want to do with it. You could decide to save, you could decide to spend. And sometimes you don't want to spend because the prices are high. Sometimes you want to spend because prices are falling. So you can decide whenever you want to spend. Because the money is still going to be the money. Do you understand store of value here? So I could choose because I need to buy a car in the future. So I could choose to start saving money now. Because of what I want to buy in the future. That's the store of value. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? The last one. A method of deferred payment. Because there is money in existence, I could choose to buy on credit now and pay at a later date. So I know I have money. Oh, I'm going to have money next week. So I need to buy a marker now. I will pay you tomorrow or after tomorrow. So with money, because there is money, I could buy on credit now and pay at a later date. Deferred payment. Is it clear? Money allows us to buy on credit because at the end of it all, we will be able to pay back. Is it clear? Yes. So we go to forms of money. The first one is cash. I think we all know cash, right? Yeah. Yeah, the cash, the 10 dinars and the rest and the coins. That is what cash is. But the problem about cash, hello, you stop that already. The problem about cash is that during inf inflation, when there's persistent rise in prices of goods and services, cash becomes less valuable. Do you understand? The worth of cash reduces. Do you get what I'm saying or not? Yes, yes. Cash is a form of money. Cash is not the only money we have. There are different kinds of money. So cash is one of them. And cash is not simply ideal because Whenever you have cash with you, as soon as there's inflation, the cash you have with you will become valueless. It won't worth it anymore. Inflation means a persistent rise in prices of goods and services. So if you have $5 with you, and the cost of this marker is $5, so tomorrow the price becomes $7. The $5 with you would not be enough to buy the marker, yes or no? That is what we meant by cash becomes valueless during inflation. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? Yes. yes. The next one, money in current account. The money you save in your current account is another form of money because you can withdraw at any point in time, you can deposit at any point in time. Do you understand current account? Current account is your bank account. So the money you have in your bank account is still money. You can withdraw it, you can, you can, you can withdraw it when you need it for transaction, and you can also keep money when you want to save. Is it clear, please? The third one. Near monies. When we talk about near monies, we're talking about assets that can easily be turned to cash. The example I made here, uh, dynamic example. Yeah, we have our stock is a near money. Our stock is a near money. Our credit, our trade debtors, they are near money. Whatever we can easily turn to cash is money. We call it near money. Whatever we can sell to become cash, yes. 
anything, any asset that you can easily monies. Near monies, yeah. Near monies. The plural. Yeah. So whatever assets you have, are you with me, please? Is it clear now or not? Okay. Whatever assets you have that you can easily turn to cash is a near money. Do you understand near money now? This could become a money if I sell it and it have money. That's what we're talking about. So whatever you can sell, whatever assets, stop that please. Whatever assets you can easily sell that you can turn to cash is a near money. Do you understand near money? Yes. It's another form of money. The next one is non-money financial assets. When we're talking about non-money financial assets, we're talking about assets that we can financial assets that we can convert to cash, like your shares. You know what shares are? Yes. When you buy shares of, of a company, shares of a company, stock. Yes. So when you buy these, you keep it. It's equivalent to money. You can easily transfer it to someone else and you get paid for it. Yes. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? Yes. And the last one is money substitutes. When we talk about money substitutes, we are talking about instruments that we can easily replace with money. Instruments that we can easily replace with money. Our cash card, our credit card, our debit card, they are also a form of money. So they are money substitutes. Any question about money substitutes? No. Money substitutes. Any instrument, any instrument that you can easily replace, that can easily be used to replace money. Like your credit card, your debit card. These are, they represent cash. Do you understand? Those are substitutes for money. Any question about the forms of money? No. And what about money itself? 